For many of us, the pandemic highlighted the option of telemedicine in Texas, and a lot of patients chose to see their doctors by video call from home instead of driving and waiting for an in-person visit. The Texas Medical Association says 72% of patients had their first telemedicine visit, and 74% of its physicians embraced it too. Early in the pandemic, Governor Abbott temporarily lifted some state restrictions on telemedicine and in his state of the state address, he said those changes should be permanent. One healthcare tool that proved very helpful during the pandemic was the use of telemedicine. It's convenient. It's convenient for both the patient and the doctor. We should seize the opportunity this session to permanently expand telemedicine so that every Texan in every region of the state can benefit from it. Texas lawmakers would need to act to make telemedicine expansion permanent. There's bipartisan support to do just that. But as politics reporter John Engel explains, there's only so much lawmakers can do. This is my, my COVID list. Dr. Guadalupe Zamora checks on his East Austin COVID-19 patients every day. Telemedicine makes that easier, but it's only sustainable if insurance companies keep paying for it like an in-person visit. Oh yeah, there's always been a pushback because you know, they don't think that this is a true method of treating a patient. Aetna, Humana, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Texas all say they'll continue to pay the same amount for a virtual visit as one that's in person. But Cedar Park physician Cameron King says there's a new challenge. Some of his patients are forced to go to a telemedicine provider of their insurance plans choosing instead of their primary care physician. If we don't get payment for it, there's no way that we can uh, really sustain that. Congress regulates payments for private insurance companies. Texas cannot. The Biden administration is expected to maintain coverage for Medicare patients' virtual visits. Governor Greg Abbott and Texas lawmakers have control over Medicaid and state-regulated plans through the Affordable Care Act, which combined represent about 45 percent of Texans. I think the policy hurdle is a fiscal note, right? So if the data is, is undecided on cost effectiveness, it's going to be, will there be a cost to the state's budget? Dr. Zamora wants to keep making these calls, fearing the impact if they go away. Patients of Texas are going to, are going to suffer because many times, particularly our older folks, can't get here to the office. For State of Texas, I'm John Engel. Texas lawmakers started easing restrictions on telemedicine beginning in 2017. That's when they removed rules requiring an in-person follow-up appointment. In 2019, they gave physicians the power to choose their own telemedicine platform versus a mandate from health insurance plans on what platforms they must use to get paid. Now in 2021, Democratic State Representative Julie Johnson has filed a bill that would establish pay parity. It would mean insurance companies would have to pay the same for a visit in person or by telehealth. And it's important to remember whatever Texas lawmakers decide, it only applies to state regulated plans. It would not impact private insurance plans. Governor Abbott pushes emergency legislation to help Texas businesses, but some Texans say he's missing the mark. We need higher wages, more access to job training and apprenticeships, good public schools for our kids. We'll look at different approaches to help Texans facing tough economic times and a pledge to help bridge the digital divide in Texas. And that being an emergency item is huge for me huge. because representing a rural area, uh, we just have, still have a lot of areas that don't have access. How the idea is getting lawmakers to work across the aisle for solutions. 